the 1st of May, the government basically said that every adult above the age of 18 is eligible for vaccination. So many of you are probably sitting on the COVID app trying to get yourself registered and more importantly, trying to get an appointment. But you're struggling to find one and that's leading to a lot of frustration. So let me explain to you on the CNBC TV 18 vaccine explainer on what exactly is going on. Now, if we take a look at India's COVID vaccine manufacturing capacity. That's the time needed to produce a batch of vaccine, the protocols needed to be followed, the raw materials required, the challenges in ramping up production without compromising on safety and the logistical challenges, there are many. Here are some of the key questions that we asked experts today. Now, estimates suggest that India needs about 60 crore doses to fully vaccinate people in the 18 to 44 age group. But if you look at what the government is saying in terms of supplies, Bharat Biotech, which is the maker of Covaxin, will be able to supply only 2 crore doses each in the month of May and June, around 6 crore doses each in July and August, and about 10 crore doses in September. Remember, half of the production capacity will have to go to the centre to vaccinate the 45 plus age group. Serum Institute has also said that while it is looking at ramping up capacity, it will be able to do so significantly post-July. It's also pointed out in caution that ramping up capacity is not as easy as it seems. So what are the possible solutions to this problem? Can vaccine manufacturers be outsourced by companies to increase supply. Now, experts that we've spoken to suggest that that's not as simple as it sounds because it's a very complex process. Even with technology transfer, how easy it to actually start manufacturing? Again, experts point out that to get a plant ready to be able to manufacture a vaccine could take anywhere from six to nine months. Kiran Mazumdar Shaw of Biocon the executive chairperson of the company, and Dr. Sharvil Patel, the managing director of Zydus Cadilla. Remember, Zydus Cadilla is one of the companies that's putting out a COVID vaccine. It's expected to hit the market in July. Explain to us why ramping up capacity and outsourcing of vaccine manufacturing is not e as easy as it's made to sound. When you make a vaccine, there are actually two components. One is the bulk vaccine, which really takes most of the time for processing it. And then you have the fill and finish, the sterile fill and finish or vialing, as we call it, which is really not the longest part of the process. Now, in order to make the bulk vaccine, uh, the cycle time is anywhere between four to six to eight weeks, depending on what the vaccine is. And I think uh, what Serum Institute and Bharat Biotech have been doing is that they have uh, basically reached full capacity when it comes to the uh, you know, vaccine, uh, bulk vaccine. And they are really filling everything that they have. Now to ramp up, you need to actually increase the production of bulk vaccine. And herein lies the challenge because when you are ramping up, you, as I just told you, there is a basically a lag phase which takes you anywhere between six to eight weeks before you can actually, whatever you want to do, whether you want to increase your production by 25%, 50% or double it, it takes that much time. So it's a complex process which cannot be outsourced easily. When we talk about chemistry, I know there are lots of manufacturing facilities, both for API as well as for drug product and that we have been able to demonstrate by making many of these products. However, when it comes to vaccines, every vaccine that is today being commercialized in India specifically for COVID or internationally, all are using different platforms. If anyone wants to send, set this up, it takes anywhere between, if you need to be the most aggressive between nine to 12 months. When we decided to put up our DNA facility, we did that in nine months, but that was a hell of a lot of work. You know, this is not about patents at the moment. So it's not about having a compulsory license, uh, you know, in, enforced. It is really about technology transfer. It is about developing a technology from scratch. And uh, as Sharvil explained, this takes time. I mean, you cannot do it overnight. It does take at least between 9 to 12 months at the very minimum. The whole point is that only that even if you can make a vaccine doesn't mean that you can make any vaccine. Every vaccine manufacturing requires a dedicated facility. Now the whole process of doing that 
has to be mapped appropriately let us be realistic when we talk about yes there are many facilities maybe in the country but they are very very small we are talking about them producing maybe lakh doses or lakh of doses not crores of doses so when we are talking about this as a manufacturer if you have to give licenses to 10 guys you also have to teach them how to make it you have to technology transfer it and all of that for a few lakh doses will probably create more hassle than solving the problem so as i said the the basic process for any vaccine is obviously you have to revive the 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 vial which is your master bank and then you have to do the scale up the scale up goes from 10 liters to 1000 liters to 5000 liters depending on what people produce at what capacities and then you have to purify it for vaccines like the inactivated vaccines the cycle time for those are about close to about 100 days if you look at the live attenuated vaccines like the covid shield or jnj or sputnik those are close to 80 days or 65 days for from the way you start till the time you release the product if you look at our dna platform it takes about 39 days all the way from starting till release so this is a very complicated process and in this whole period of the first 60 to 75 days it's a completely aseptic uh, clean room Uh, and making sure that you are sterile in every process that you do from every material that you use every material that you transfer everything is an aseptic or sterile process so it's a very very tedious and long process you need a lot of effort and skill and it it can only be built by time wherever a vaccine is produced and whoever produces a vaccine needs to go through a tech transfer scale up validation and all the other processes that shardwell just explained okay so if even that is going to take time in fact it's, it will take a little more than the 65 to 90 day time cycle because there's a tech transfer involved i know we make a biologic which is itolizumab and that also even though we make it routinely is taking us at least 6 weeks so i think no biologic can just be done in a hurry it has to go through its uh, natural time cycle and uh, whether you you know start with a new vaccine or whether you're producing an old vaccine it does take time there are other vaccines being developed as i said you know whatever biological e does will add to the you know the the vaccine capacity and supply situation by august uh, you know you know that serum institute is also developing novavax which hopefully also will come into the market by july august or that time frame so i think by august you will have many the capacity will hopefully double is what i am expecting so i th- or not double but at least close to doubling so i think one and of course zydus itself is going to uh, come out with its vaccine i don't know what the timeline is but i'm sure it's around that time so that is why i believe that uh, by august you should start seeing a much higher supply situation we should have a contingency plan at least of importing a certain quantity of vaccines because you do need to basically hasten vaccination right now we have at least two to three other vaccines that will potentially enter uh, maybe in august or so so we would have significantly more capacities available for specifically for us as a company we are um, we are hoping our efficacy data and we are sure it should come out in may and as soon as that is there we will obviously apply for an emergency use and uh, we will start supplying uh, by end of june but probably large quantities by july onwards because i've been always saying that we have to have our logistics in in an absolutely efficient seamless kind of way so i personally believe that it's like saying that you should target that every time a vial is produced in a plant and and uh, uh, put you know dispatched from a warehouse it should get to the vaccination center in no less than 72 hours i don't think that is happening right now we have to vaccinate faster and that means you have to have a real time kind of movement of vaccines from the plant to the vaccination centers right now i think the the whole system is uh, you know is 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 slowing things down because it first goes to a central warehouse procurement uh, uh, done by the central government and then it gets allocated to state governments then in an uh, you know 
uh, when the uh, state government start procuring directly, probably it will become faster. But even at the state government level, they will first procure and then send it out to the vaccination centers. So I think everybody has to look at how quickly can they get the vaccine vial from the warehouse to the vaccination center. That should be the real focus. You also have to understand that the sheer number of vaccines doses required in such a short period of time is it is a very Herculean task for any country to, to succeed on. So I don't think it is all that easy to do. And you know, the we have to understand we're working with live viruses, we're working with cell lines, we're working with things that are biological. You know, the first and primary aspect of why vaccine, you have to first make sure that it's safe. And I won't want to highlight more and more how safe it is needed to be that you have trust in the vaccine. And if you bypass too much of the regulatory process, like CDL testing and many other things, you are putting a lot of risk to people and patients. And if, if God forbid ever that happens, that would lose a lot of confidence when it comes to vaccines. So we have to go through some part of the rigor because it is a process that requires it and it is a live biological entity that we are managing, which has to be sterile and has to be of certain activity. So I think that is very critical and we all need to be conscious about that fact. I also strongly believe that we must have a better logistic solution or a digitally enabled solution as part of Zycov D rollout, we are already producing a whole logistics digital solution by which we will be able to track and trace every order and fulfillment of every order, whether it is a state or the central government or local authorities or local institutions, and make sure that we are up to date on the number of product and vials available at different centers. So I think those are the efforts that both the company and see the states and the central can do to make sure we can improve this lag that may be so there. And we need some digital, not only digital, but the whole end-to-end -end solution, which is physical and digital, which can solve for the number of days it takes to, to send out the vaccines. But again, we have to be on air on the side of caution because we don't want to take a wrong step while doing this. 